Our lives were different now. I'd built myself up, slept with the phone turned off, and took ocean swims. My husband and I traveled. We'd made it through a long, dark passage. My son was 25 and on his own. His late teens and early 20s were years of drug arrests, homelessness, and sickness. Now he was alive and healthy. He had a studio and had just transferred to UC San Diego. Once in a while, he'd call midday to see if I'd mind taking his dog out. I'd enter his studio and practice not looking around. <laughs> no more vigilance. Just be mom walking his pit bull around the block. <laughs> I was thinking of this on one of those hotter than summer back to school afternoons, a Thursday, September 4th, 2003. People's Market in OB wasn't the usual cart bumping scene. Just some locals moseying, but I was in a big hurry. I had my dogs out in the car, the windows down, and they had those goofy dog smiles they get when they can smell dog beach. <laughs> they barked at a flurry of cross-country runners in maroon track shorts. I had my garden salad in hand, and I was trying to decide between the green goddess, homemade dressing, or the tahini, chi, <laughs> you name it, half listening, to the produce guy with a ropey dreads that was ragging on the Padre's pitching staff. <laughs> That's when I heard firecrackers popping off. I didn't think much of it. Labor Day had just passed, and hey, it's OB. <laughs> Until maybe 10 seconds later, someone ran into the store screaming, it's a shooter. The produce guy's eyes were hazel, like my son's. He looked stupefied. What the hell? For several seconds, nobody moved. Then we all scrambled. I heard someone ask, where? In the store? I remember seeing bright sun stream through the stockroom back door. I'll run out that way. Wait, I don't work here. I'll get in trouble. More shots cracked the air. Shut the fuck up! Listen! Someone yelled from over the aisles where I imagined others lying on the floor. At least I had the pyramids of oranges and the tomato counter. I should ditch my purse. That didn't make sense. They can take my purse, take my money and cards. My hands shook as I pulled apart my wallet. From the plastic protector, I grabbed a photo of my son when he was 10 and a creased photo of my husband when he was about the same age. I stuffed him into my bra. I wanted to survive. I hope someone's calling 911, a guy mouthed off. Back in 2003, Peoples was one of the first to have one of those gentle suggestions, no cell phones on in the store. I'd left mine in the car. Crying people were streaming into the store now. I scanned the front for the friendly young cashiers, praying they were going to be OK. More shots. They sounded louder, closer. I could hear the green parrots outside along Voltaire squawking the way they do when jets scream too close over OB. I could see some of the cashiers rising now, elbows crooked and ducking as they dashed for the back. They were big-eyed and scared shitless. I was nervous, mouth dry as a rag. I'll grab a juice. I'll pay for it later. <laughs> Why was everything happening outside? Maybe it was a carjacking gone wrong. Maybe there's more than one robber, like a bank heist. Fucking movies. <laughs> a woman crawled in from around the apple stand, slipping on her long gauzy skirt, caught under her knees. She sobbed. Somebody's been shot. Please bring him a blanket. Bring him a blanket and cover him. Then more people still crouching crowded into the store. It was a swarm. I overheard conversations. 
I wanted to hear them, to know what I could know. A guy said he counted 15 shots. A woman said at least one guy was on the ground really bleeding. She said he didn't look that old. No gunfire for maybe five minutes. Those of us in the store could look out the long vertical windows and see clumps of people standing around. Shoppers with cloth bags, runners. People were in shock. Someone said, no one leaves until the cops come. Still, a few people slinked away. I waited in the store. Then I remembered, my dogs, God, they're still out there. I tried to see if I could spot them in the back seat, maybe sitting up. Nothing. The car was maybe 15 feet from the entrance where now a body lay under a blanket. When the police and investigators arrived, we were told that the area was being secured. Some of us were asked to give statements. A cop led me to my car. My dog's heads popped up. I was shaky and I couldn't help but stare at the body beneath the blanket, the maroon track shorts. One of his teammates screamed, his fucking father killed him. I heard people say they'd seen the dad step forward and fire three more shots into his son's head. A cop directed us to the alley, the driveway entrance wrapped in yellow tape. Loose gravel and dips in the asphalt jangled me. Feeling like some new, unsure driver, I hesitated trying to make a right into rush hour traffic on Evers. Driving was too much. I remember being afraid I'd hit somebody, skaters, surfers on bikes with boards tucked under their arms. I noticed kids piled in SUVs, parents driving them home for dinner. It was all so normal. I wanted home. I wanted my husband. I wanted to call my son. My husband had the news on. Not knowing where I'd been, he was watching a SWAT team standoff with that man holed up in a townhouse a couple miles away. Helicopters gave the bird's eye view of the surrounded street and the angled cop cars. Don held me. Then he got up to take care of the dogs and find something for dinner. I was okay, but I wanted to be alone. I kept the TV on, channel surfed between all the local news coverage. I learned that the boy's name was Evan Nash. He was 14 years old, a tall, pimply teen with braces. He just started high school that week. A couple of things ran through my head before I called my son. I wanted to be careful not to dump the whole thing on him, all that I could have said about how happy I was he was back in my life. I might be a willing mess on the phone, unable to just share what I'd been through. Seeing that dead boy on the ground hit me in the gut, not just for the loss of his young life, not just because I'd been lucky and not hurt, but because my son had gotten his life back. And because earning a life back doesn't mean it couldn't be randomly snuffed out. I dialed. He was driving home from school. He listened. He told me he loved me. That's what I remember. I wanted to make sense of the shooting. I'd go back to People's Market and find someone who'd been there that day. I remember being kind of pissed off at People's. Why couldn't they have reached out to us more? I knew that was silly. I drove over two days later on a Saturday and talked to the Sandy Dreadlocks produce guy. <laughs> and I asked him how he was doing. I told him my name and asked his. He seemed kind of embarrassed and looked around, said the whole thing had been really rough. I walked over to the memorial gathering of candles, flowers, and stuffed animals. It seemed small, kind of pushed over to the side so that it wouldn't block the entrance to the store. 
That Monday, I drove by, and the whole memorial was gone, snuffed. Nancy Carey.